Hey everybody, how are you? This is Chef Danny from Cooking the Chords. Beautiful show today. It is apple season. And I really want to talk about my own local ingredients. I am so lucky to have a local farm in my town. I got a tip that Mr. Bojangles likes apples. Do a man both angles and he dance for you in this war of shoe silver hair, baggy shirt, and baggy pants. Oh, the old such He jumps so high, oh, he jumps so high. Then he lightly touches my. Mr. Bojangles, Mr. Bojangles, Mr. Bojangles. As I quick here, real quick, before we start the show, we got a lot going on, and I am so excited to talk about what we're doing. So today we are going to do pump. We are going to do um, country, country pork, local pork from Stone Garden Farms here in Shelton, Connecticut, Freddie and Stashi's place. We also have two types of apples from Beersley Farms, also in Shelton, Danny Beersley. We got wine sap. We got crimson tart. Both very, very tart, very structured. We're going to saute these. They're not going to fall apart like a Macintosh would. Okay. We also have my local indigenous from my backyard, fresh arugula. We also have cider from Beersley Farms as well. Let's get started. So what we're going to do, we are going to season our pork. A little salt and pepper. Both sides. This is just center cut boneless pork from the farm. And you know what? What I would do, I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to take a little with this knife of the fat off. We need a little fat, but we don't need a whole lot of fat. Okay? Just like that. We'll take a little of this off here. This stuff. I mean, we're going to get enough for this to render down and just give us beautiful flavor. Throw that in my little garbage. Great. All right, here we go. Salt. Pepper. Both sides. Oh, I already have a pre preheated pan here. And this is really simple because this you can do this with the bone, you can do it thicker. You can start this on the stove and finish it in the oven. There's so many things you can do with this. So I'm just gonna do it right here. Add a little olive oil. This right here. Okay. Scroll that around a little bit. It's hot. And hopefully I don't have to put the fan on. But if I do, I will. Put the fan on here. Well, you hear that sizzle. I have to put the fan on and get a little smoke in here. Okay? Beautiful. Now we're not going to touch this. We're going to let this caramelize in a few minutes. Meanwhile, while we do that, I'm going to cut some garlic with my very, very convenient, ergonomically designed garlic slicer. Time and energy saving tools, folks. Oop, this is just quick. A little of that. Just like this fella in the movie. Beautiful. Just a little twisty twist. That's it. You gotta peel the garlic first. I have a rubber garlic peeler that I use. If you're interested in these, this is the what I call the cooking cord crusher set, garlic crusher set. This is also a uh, mincer. Okay, I hear it. I hear it. My pork is a cooking. Okay, look. Oh, we're gonna get a little caramelization on here. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna start to put some red onion in here. A little red onion around like that. 
in some apples. These are already pre-sliced, nice and thick, just like that. And I'm also going to put a pat of butter in here. So these are going to start to cook. If you think you need more oil, you can do it. Beautiful, look at that. These are starting to caramelize up. The uh, protein, the natural sugar in the pork is starting to caramelize, and they call that the Maillard reaction for the scientific people. Food and science are hand in hand. There's a lot of reasons why things happen with food, and it is very, very scientific. And baking is even more scientific. So now we are going to start to caramelize you. We're going to let them cook a little bit. Okay? Over here, I'm going to put some cranberries in there as well. And some fresh garlic. But I'm going to wait on the garlic because if I put the garlic in now, what's going to happen is that garlic is going to burn before it's done before the uh, onions are caramelized. Right. I'm going to turn this up a little bit because I can. Folks, I also made some mashed sweet potatoes. I mix the sweet potatoes with I mix the sweet potatoes with regular potatoes. A little salt and pepper. That's really all you need because this is already it's going to be a little sweet with the cranberries and the apples. I didn't want to overly sweeten it. I didn't want to put maple syrup. I didn't want to put brown sugar. I wanted to have a flavor contrast of sweet and savory in the fish. Because that's what's going to play a trick in your mouth. That's what activates different parts of your tongue. That's what gives you that wow factor. If everything is sweet, and there's no, there's no savory contrast, you don't taste the whole thing like it's intended to be tasted and eaten. It's very, very important. So this is starting to caramelize. Beautiful. This is the only, this is going to be, I would venture to say this is going to take about 10 minutes. I have another one right here if we, if we don't finish, because I don't like to keep this show too long. But there you go. Look at that, Barb. Barb's getting some really, really good shots. She's a really good filmographer, and she's a super person to boot. So, <laughs> and she's awful cute. Hi, Barb. Hi. We've been doing this now together for a couple months. We are having so much fun cooking for us. And we are doing private events at people's homes. There are people out there that are doing private events outside. And we actually had one this Saturday. It's the 75th birthday party. Very exciting. Four courses. Beautiful. And yes, I do the entertainment. So we bring a lot of value. We are unique. And we are a bargain. Barb and I do this together. We have a lot of fun. All right, so now this is starting to caramelize beautifully, okay? I'm going to let that keep going. I'm going to keep the one up in the back so I can plate it to show you what it looks like when it's done. I also have um, some fresh thyme from my garden. I'm going to put it right in here. This is going to give this a little aromatic, a little herb flavor, a little depth. Okay. Now when this starts to get to this, and your, and your apples caramelize, and so do your onions, if you keep cooking them, they're going to burn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the Jersey Farm fresh apple flavor. Boom. Right in. You let that reduce. Reduce is going to concentrate the flavor. I'm going to add a butter pat in here. Okay, and that's going to bring it all together. Beautiful. I'm also going to season this with a little salt. Pepper. You always want to season it to your hand. You don't want to go like this over it because if this thing decides to pop off the top, guess what? You ruin your dinner. A little fresh ground pepper. Always better than buying the pre ground if you have an opportunity to get it. So much better. So right now I smell predominantly. Thyme leaf right now. That's because the aromatic is into the steam, and with the oils in the herb are starting to infiltrate and infuse into the into the uh, into the juice into the pan gravy that we're making. That is beautiful. Now, see, these apples are beautiful for this because they're really, really tart. They cut through the fat, and it also gives a little tart flavor, which wakes up your taste buds in your mouth. So that'll also contrast the flavor of this. Okay. And it also 
will give you a little texture as far as the crunch goes. All right? Wonderful. Now, while this is cooking, while this is cooking, I am going to add some garlic to this. You know what? I'm not even going to add garlic to that. I'm going to add it to this. I'm just going to cut my arugula just a little bit, and I'm going to wilt this, okay? I'm going to wilt it. This is really peppery, peanutty flavor. Really, really good. All right. A little olive oil to this. The pan is really, really hot. You've got to be careful. Woo! Now, I washed this, so this is going to actually... A little garlic in here. Just a little. Boom. Woo! Add a little water in there. Just like that. You don't even have to put it back in the stove. That is both just perfect right there. Just the way I want it. Beautiful. Now I think we are ready to plate. We are ready to plate this thing part. We've got our plate out. We've got our beautiful mashed potatoes. Now this is a little bit undercooked right now, but that's alright. Because whenever you do something like this, you're going to let that rest after you take it out. And all the blood will go back into the middle of the meat. You don't want to cut that right away. We're going to go right in the middle, give it a little height. Showcase that pork. We're going to put our sauce on the bottom, the gravy on the bottom, just like this. Okay? This is, oh, this is almost done. If you think this would need a little more juice, you pop a little more cider in there. Mix that up a little bit. Okay, so now this is done. We're going to take this off the stove. We're going to let that sit there. We're not going to cut it yet. This one we can cut because. It's been resting. So we're going to cut it on the bias. Just like this. Ooh. Ooh. See, it's got a little pink to it. Oh, Barb, what do you think? Woo -hoo -hoo, Barb, what do you think? Looks great. Are we going to kill this thing or what? Oh, look at that. Of course, this. Right on top. Whoop. That's okay. Pick that out. We'll do a little garnish. Just like this. Boom. Let's move this out so we can get a food network shop here. That is beautiful. That is country style pork with two kinds of local apples, local cider, local pork, and local arugula. Buy local folks. You can control what you put in the food and buy local. Support your farmers. Thank you for signing on. God bless you all. And we are for, we have three dates left for holiday parties. If you would like to um, claim one of those dates, you can email me at cookingandcords at gmail.com or call my cell phone, 203-414-5263. And I invite you all to check out our newly uh, finished up website, cookingandcords.com. Leave a message. Thank you so much. God bless. Peace.